Interface Video presents Fair Hope Hospice Today. Brought to you by Fair Hope Hospice and Palliative Care. Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan. Fairfield Medical Center. The Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities. Dagger Law. And the Frank E. Smith Funeral Home. Welcome to a special episode of Fair Hope Hospice Today. This month, we celebrate Kristen Glacier's first anniversary as President and CEO of Fair Hope Hospice and Pals of Care. Recently, Kristen sat down for an interview about her tenure and to explain how Fair Hope celebrates life. What it means for me to be President and CEO here at Fair Hope Hospice and Palliative Care, it's a true honor and it's a gift and it's a very important responsibility that I've been asked to do and to carry on um, to make sure that our community receives the very best care for people who have advanced illnesses and end-of-life care and for me that's just something that's a true honor and a privilege to be able to do for our community. With my name and my face attached to Fairhope, you know, I have been given this great responsibility to carry this torch. And for me, I take that very personally because everything, every word that comes out of this business, every face that walks down the street and goes into the hospital and facilities and takes care of families, my family, you know, your families, to me that's very personal. I need to make sure that they're doing what's most important, what's best for the families, what's best for the care that we have promised this community. And so for me, this isn't just a job, it's never been just a job because being CEO seems surreal, but for me, it gives me that chance every day to make sure that somebody is gonna get taken care of the way they should be, the way they need to be, and the way that hospice hospices all over strive to be, and really that's what Fairhope is all about. So I first started at Fairhope many years ago, about 25 years ago, right out of college. I'm a social worker, I have my degree in social work, and so I, this was really my first job um, out of college. And I came back to Lancaster, and there was a position open here as a social worker. And so I applied, and they hired me, and I loved it. I worked here about six years, but it was very different, and it wasn't here at the Pickering House. It was. Uh, down off East Main Street and um, we had maybe 30 patients so I was in charge of seeing all the hospice patients I was in charge of the bereavement care so when someone passed away I was able to go to their homes and support them and provide bereavement care to them I also had the privilege of being the volunteer coordinator so I was able to recruit volunteers and train volunteers and then assign them to families. So when you think about it, we had maybe 30 patients then, and now we have about 145, 150 patients. So after about six years, um, I had worked for Fair Hope then, and I kind of went on my way. I tried some different things. I worked in the school system and worked for different nursing facilities. and. Um, Probably about six years ago, I got a call to, back, to come back to Fairhope. They asked me if I could come back and just really um, be the director of the social workers. We had grown so much um, with a census of anywhere from 130 to 160. They needed someone to kind of oversee the social workers, and so I was really excited to do that. I got a chance to, do, to come back and, and help grow our team, work with the social workers. I also got a really good chance to be a part of the Pickering House. So, my day-to-day -day responsibilities were to work through the Pickering House with the physicians and the families and patients and really make sure that they were comfortable, that they had a good plan in place, that they got everything they needed. So as that position kind of grew a little bit, they asked me if I would take over working with the bereavement team. So that meant um, handling all the bereavement needs and we have a wonderful grief team. And then. After that came the chaplains, so they asked me if I would oversee working with the chaplains, and um, from there it just kind of grew. At Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, we provide compassionate care in a way that I'm not sure I've ever really seen. 
it's hard to explain, it's hard to describe if you don't see it and live it every day the way we do. Not only do we see that every day here at the Pickering House with our nurses and our aides and our staff and, and our dietary, but we hear it every day with our nurses and our staff that are in the field driving for miles from, from facility to facility, from house to house. And the things that they do that really none of us probably ever know and they don't talk about because it's just what they do. Um, you know, take an extra minute to sit with someone to talk about what their biggest fear is or what's most important to you and how can I make that happen. You know, I remember one situation a couple of years ago where we had a family that was on hospice and they lived pretty far out of Lancaster and they wanted one last super good Mexican meal with all the fixins and we knew that we couldn't, they couldn't go anywhere. It was just at that point where they couldn't leave the home. So we had our chaplain, our social worker, our nurses and some volunteers. They cooked up the best Mexican dinner you could think of. They made them a perfect Mexican cake. They, cake, they had music and they took it down to that family and let them have a really wonderful dinner by themselves, the, a really good Mexican dinner that they wanted. So those are the kind of things that we don't talk about a lot, but that happen every day. Um, just the, the way that you see that the day-to-day -day affects our staff, it's tough some days, but they get a lot of joy out of the good things that we do. You know, I know we had a case here at the Pickering House, and um, it was a young lady who um, didn't have really have family, and um, she had a dog that she had taken from someone who had passed. So she had, was caring for this dog and it really was what was most important to her. She had to come to the Pickering House because she lived alone. She had a lot of pain. We were really managing her care here. And the one thing she wanted was the dog. So we were able to bring the dog in and out a little bit for the dog to be with her. Um, so what we did is we were able to bring in a very large bed and that allowed the dog to come up and lay next to her, not on her. It didn't cause her discomfort. And the, the dog just laid with her hand on his head and never left her side. And so, you know, those are the kinds of things that we see every day that somebody here noticed that that dog was important and they went out of their way to make sure that we had what was important to her here with her to make her last days really comfortable. Really what makes Fairhope what it is, is our staff. Our staff, you know, it's really interesting because a lot of times when we have staff that come to us and they'll say, you know, I really want to work for Fairhope, and we say, why? It's always a question that we ask. Why do you want to be here with us? And what they most always say is, you've touched my life this way. You know, you took care of this person, or I've seen what you've done, and I want to do that. And so for me, what makes Fairhope stand out is that personal care. The staff that have been here know what it takes. They've been on the other side. They see what it takes to make someone comfortable, to make the family comfortable, and really what kind of support they need. And so I think that's what really makes Fairhope what it is. Wow, what makes me most proud of being a part of Fairhope is really our staff. You know, this isn't always an easy job. I have the easy part, really. I, I make decisions and I, you know, want the best for what we do, but it's the staff that go out every day. They see difficult things every day. They put their heart in what they do every day. From, from the nurses, to our nurse practitioners, to the dietary team, to, you know, the, the folks that just keep this building sparkling, to our aides and our chaplains. So I'm most proud of our staff. When I volunteer, you know, when I come over here, you know, the first thing I think about is my dad. You know? yeah. But then also think about all the people that helped us when we were here. Something brings me here and I feel that it's my dad's spirit. He wants us here. He wants us to give back because of what I did for him. And I think that's helped me with a lot of my grief. Of the support of the people here and the volunteers. Mm -hmm. yeah. That makes it a great place. Fairfield Medical Center took care of me like I was family. I was made to feel like I was the only person that they were going to see that day, even though I knew that wasn't the case. Everyone at Fairfield Medical Center was very attentive. They just put my mind at ease. I was there for 12 days, and I felt comfortable there. 
we were people to them, not a number. They took the time to get to know us, our personalities. Yeah. Well, they saved my life. You know, how do you beat that? I don't know how I could have gotten through it without them. Experience Fairfield Medical Center. Dagger Law has been part of the Lancaster community for more than 110 years. This is where we live and work. You'll see us at festivals, sporting events, and all around town. We consider our clients as friends, and we walk alongside you through challenging times. Whether you're a growing business, a changing family, facing litigation, planning your future, or dealing with land issues, we're right here. We are local. We are trusted. We are experienced. Dagger Law. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster and 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. There are so many rewards in life. You coming into our home was one of the greatest rewards we could have ever had. You know, it took 20 years and I got my third child who was 17 at the time. It's so cool to watch the adult that you've become, and you really have done as much for us as you think we've done for you. We could not have done, as a family, what the Peckery House did for my dad. No way. I mean, you just can't match that care, uh, you know, at home. They made the whole entire family feel comfortable every step of the way. We now return to a special edition of Fairhope Hospice Today, celebrating Kristen Glazier's first anniversary as president and CEO of Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care. I think some of the things that Fairhope can provide that and hospices can be provide, but, but specifically Fairhope, is we're sitting here. We're at the Pickering House today and and the care that we can provide at the Pickering House, it's a short term beautiful facility where families can come, be with their patients. When a patient is really struggling to be comfortable or there's dynamics at home or there's just the caregiver's just tired. You know, the Pickering House is a place where people can go, families can go. We have experts here, we have physicians here, we're fully staffed 24-7. This is sort of a, just a comfortable area for someone to be, whether they're facing the decision of do they need to discharge and, and provide care in their home? Do they need to go to a facility? Because sometimes that happens. You know, we have the staff here that can help them make those really hard decisions. We have nurses, um, we have social workers. Our social work team can provide all kinds of options. You know, um, sometimes you think that I can, there's no way I can take care of my loved one at home. But what I think they don't always hear, but we have the chance to explain to them is that we're gonna have a nurse that's gonna come to your home once a week at least, more if needed, every day if you need some extra special support. We have staff available 24-7, so you pick up a phone and you call, you're gonna get a live person that's gonna be able to troubleshoot and offer help and visit you. We have chaplains that can be there 24-7. If you make a phone call and you need 
some support, they can be there for you. We have aides that can come to the home or to a facility. And you know, that's really something special. Um, it's been a rough two years for a lot of assisted livings and nursing facilities and just healthcare in general. So when we have an aid that we can send to that home and give them some relief or send to the facility for an extra layer of care just to wrap them up and you know, just take good care of them, that's really a privilege to do that. So the difference between hospice care and palliative care is really difficult sometimes for people to grasp because people use that word palliative kind of interchangeably with um, the type of care they're going to receive. And so we've worked really hard here at Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care to just explain and help people understand the differences. So palliative care has been around for a really long time. Um, but the differences that we that we see and that we try to help the community understand and we're working really hard right now with our physicians to just understand those differences so when someone is appropriate for hospice the physician feels that if their terminal diagnosis follows the trajectory of that their life expectancy would be less than six months now we know and we've seen that that sometimes people are with us for three or four days, sometimes six months, sometimes eight or nine months. It just depends. As long as we're seeing that trajectory of that disease continue to slowly decline because none of us know, you know how that really is gonna go. Everybody's so different. But that would be what would qualify someone for hospice care. So with palliative care, it's a little different. Palliative care is when someone has a diagnosis of a chronic, advanced chronic illness. So that illness could be any type of illness that we know that eventually will take their life, but it could be a longer span of time. We could look at two years, um, but we know that that advanced chronic illness is not going to get better, but at some point, they may be ready for hospice. And so the, I think that palliative and hospice care is really kind of a beautiful thing that just kind of fits together. Um, our palliative program is driven by all certified nurse practitioners. We have uh, four on staff, and they see patients who are have a chronic illness but are not ready for hospice, and that's okay. Maybe they're physically not ready. Maybe philosophically they're just not ready to, to say, I need hospice care, and that's okay. You know, we just want to meet people where they are. We want to provide education and support. So a lot of times with palliative patients, our nurse practitioners will see them every month, could be for a year. And, you know, maybe then we see that they've had kind of a slow decline. Our palliative nurse practitioners work very closely with that person's primary care physician. So everybody's on the same page. Um, oftentimes you're going to see that someone that's on palliative care maybe has lots of hospitalizations. And you know, at some point they may just say that I'm tired. You know, that's too much for me. I want to move to hospice care. I want to be comfortable. I want to be in my home. And you know, studies have shown that when someone makes that decision to sign on to hospice care, their life expectancy can increase from six to eight weeks because it's less trips back and forth to the hospital. It's less aggressive care. It's just that sole focus on pain relief, comfort measures, they're in their home. So that's um, something that we really talk about when we look at the differences between palliative and hospice care. Okay, respite care here at Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care is a true hidden gem. It's a benefit for hospice families, hospice patients who, you know, just really need just a little break from caregiving. I don't know, a lot of us have taken care of a loved one, some of us haven't, so we don't really understand what that entails. But if you think about it, that is care that you provide 24-7. Sometimes you don't have time to take a shower, you don't have time to get to the doctor, the grocery store. Um, you know, if you have an illness or an unexpected surgery and you are the primary caregiver for someone, it's, you really panic when you think about what am I gonna do? So we are very blessed here at the Pickering House that we can provide respite care two families up to five nights a month as they need that care. So for instance, if a patient is um, needing to come into the Pickering House so that a caregiver can 
just get a physician's appointment taken care of. Maybe they have several appointments they need. Um, and you know what? Maybe just sometimes that caregiver's tired. Maybe they just need to sleep. Um, we can bring that person in here. We can take really good care of them. We get a lot of information from the caregiver so we know exactly what they want. What's their favorite temperature of the room? TV stations. What do they love to eat? What do they hate to eat? We know all of those things because we want you to allow us to take care of your loved one for those days. We want you to stay home. You can come visit and you're welcome to stay, but we really want you to take that time to just take a deep breath, just relax, just take care of yourself a little bit. And you know what, we often see that when that happens, those caregivers can really, really then continue to give care. It's like they can make it through another month. So here at Fairhope, we offer grief and bereavement services, and that's really something that a lot of people kind of forget that we offer. So when we service and we take care of a family and that loved one passes away, we don't just let go of that family. You know, we've taken hold of them and we've kept them under our, our wings and our arms for sometimes months, hours, days. So when that person passes away, that's a really hard place to be. And so we have a wonderful grief team. And what they do is they're gonna follow, they're gonna check on your loved one for up to 13 months. So they're gonna make phone calls. That first couple days after the person passes, they're gonna call and they're just gonna check on you. They're gonna make sure that you're getting up out of bed, that you're eating, you know, are you doing okay? Do you need to talk? They're gonna send cards. They're gonna check on you and make phone calls at three months, six months, nine months, up through 13 months. They're gonna invite you to join us for support groups. Um, they're going to encourage you. We Now we're so thankful we can do Zoom calls and Zoom groups and so it's just really incredible that we can hang on and follow those loved ones for 13 months after that. The other thing that I think Fairhope provides to this community and I would love for the community to really understand what, what this is, is that's our, our PALS bereavement support. So we provide support to the community to children. Not a lot of people know that. So we can provide support to children who have lost a loved one, not just on hospice. So let's say we are in a, a school system and there's been, as you know, there's a lot of hardships that happen to children and they carry that burden. But if they have had some kind of a death that's occurred, then Fairhope can support them in the school system. We can go in and we can provide grief support to them. And it's really a lot of, really cool teaching on how to, how, for, how children can just understand what grief feels like, that it's okay, help them work through it, help them move through it. If we feel like they're stuck and they might need something else, then we're going to let their guardian or their parent know that so they can get some extra special care. But um, the community, I mean, we really just love to support the community. And we do provide services to a lot of school systems locally in Fairfield County and surrounding areas. I think the advice that I would give someone who is looking for a program that best suits them, you know, there's always things on the internet that you can go and you can look and you can see how, uh, how an agency is rated or how well they do, um, how, what Medicare believes that are the best providers out there. Word of mouth is, is always important too. But you know, I would ask that when you're thinking about or looking at making a decision about what type of care you need, you know, think about what's, what's most important to you. Um, is it quality of care? Um, is it quantity of care? And, and really ask questions. You know, sometimes we will get phone calls from families and they'll say, well, I'm looking at different hospices. I want to ask you some things, but I'm going to call other hospices. And really what I would tell everybody is make one phone call. Make that phone call to Fairhope. Let us sit down with you. Let us talk to you about what we can bring to you. I don't think people know what Fairhope can do and what hospices can provide and that's a message that we need to make clear. So when someone calls Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, what you can expect is you are going to have a person answer the phone. They are going to take your information. They're going to ask you some questions and they're going to make it very easy for you through this process. Even if you just have questions, um, you maybe want to speak to a nurse, or you just want information about what Fairhope can do for you. 
Once you make that first phone call, we'll take care of the rest. We're going to make phone calls to your physician. We're going to set something up for you and your family. We want it to be as comfortable and as easy as possible for you. It is so important for families to feel comfortable and safe when they call because oftentimes that first phone call, even picking up the phone physically and just dialing that number is very hard. Um, you're asking for something that is a very difficult and private decision and so we want everyone to feel comfortable and safe that you pick up that phone, you make that phone call and let us just guide you and lead you where you want and then you can make an informed decision about what's best for you and your family. Thank you for watching this edition of Fairhope Hospice Today. For more information on the services offered, please visit fairhopehospice.org or call 1-800-994-7077. Interface Video presents Fairhope Hospice Today. Brought to you by Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care. Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities, Dagger Law, and the Frank E. Smith Funeral Home.